Dear students, good morning. Myself, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ansari, Assistant Professor, Department of Agriculture and Engineering. In earlier classes, we have already discussed different types of solar collector and their uses. So today we will discuss about solar water heating, solar distillation, and solar cooker. So first we will see solar water heating system. Normally, hot water is created with the help of fossil fuel or electricity. But we have one alternative option. We can use solar energy for using for heating solar hot to create hot water. So, in conventional method, water is heated by burning fuel or electricity. So that fossil fuel can be or electricity can be replaced by solar energy. So the process in which solar energy is utilized for heating water is called solar water water heating and the devices which is used for heating solar water is called solar water heat heater so solar water water heating system is wide has wide application in uh, industrial application or household or domestic application in town and city it is very high potential for use in rural household dairy processing plant, food processing industry and uh, other agro processing industries or agricultural operation. A large number of companies are manufacturing solar water heating, solar water heating heater. In general, a solar water heater consists of absorber, glazing cover over the absorber, hot water tank and connected pipes. The, the, any system consists of these things like absorber, glazing, hot water tank and connected pipe. So solar water heating system, there are two types of solar water heating system. Natural, convec natural convection solar water heater and force convection solar water heating system. Natural circulation system is called passive system and force circulation water heating system consists called force convection or active system. In natural convection, water, solar water heating system is carried out naturally in which there is no active element like pump is used. In active system, a, a active element like pump is used for handling water, pumping water. But in both the cases, a flat plate solar collector or evacuated tube solar collector is used to absorb the solar radiation energy to convert into heat energy. So that converted heat energy is utilized to heat the water. So in natural water, natural circulation water heating system, solar water heater consists of collector, tilted collector, then transparent cover, then high insulated water storage tank, then well insulated pipes connecting the collector and storage tank. Then the bottom of the storage tank is normally kept one foot above the collector. Circulation occurs through the natural convection, convection currents or we can say thermosiphoning. thermosiphoning. So when water in the collector is heated by the solar radiation, the density of water decreases and due to decrease in density, water rises toward the tank and high density water is comes down to lower level and there is naturally a convective current is developed and due to that convective current so water is heated so this for this forces cold water at the bottom of the tank and the flow out from the storage tank by gravity enter into the bottom of the collector through pipe provided at the bottom of the storage tank Thus water is heated and rises up into the tank. Due to density difference, water circulates in the pipe through the tank. So hot water remains at the top of the insulated tank. And this type of system does not involve any pump. That's why it is called passive system of solar water heat. Normally this type of system is used for a small scale application. So see this is the photograph pictorial representation of natural circulation water heating system this is the storage tank so hot water remains at the top due to lower intensity and cold water remains at the bottom due to higher intensity 
So this is the solar <coughs> flat plate collector. Water is heated in this flat collector. Due to greenhouse effect, the temperature inside the collector increases and solar radiation is converted into heat energy. Heat energy. That heat energy is utilized for heating the water. Since after heating the water, the density of water decreases, so it will rise towards the towards the top of the collector, and slowly it will move to the tank. And again, it, it will move like this, and cold water will rush to the lower part of the collector. So there is natural circulation. That's why it is called natural convection solar water heating system. So this is inlet cold water inlet and this is the hot water outlet. So water is taken from top where hot water is available for the use. And this is the insulated storage tanks. So there is high quality insulation to reduce the heat loss. Otherwise there will be temperature drop and one cannot get hot water up to the desired temperature level. So this is the schematic diagram of natural convection water heating system. So this is used for a small scale application. So another type is earlier was flat plate type solar collector and this one is evacuated tube solar water heater. In this case high temperature application this type of solar water is used for high temperature application. In earlier case one cannot get high temperature. If we are getting temperature like 60 degrees, 70 degree in flat plate type. So in this evacuated tube type solar heater, one can get temperature up to 90 degree, 95 degree Celsius. So these two types are commonly used for domestic application and a small scale application. So huge amount of energy, fossil fuel or electricity can be saved by using this type of system. Second one is forced circulation. So we have already discussed there, is, there are two type of convection, one is natural, natural convection, another one is forced convection. So in natural convection, the process occurs naturally without involving of any active element like blower for air handling or pump for water handling. So in forced convection, pump is used for forcing the water. So normally forced convection is used for industrial application where, where large amount of water, hot water is required like for food processing industry, dairy processing industry, hostel or you can say hotel. So when large amount of hot water is required for supplying processed heat in an industry or you can say large amount of water, hot water is required for a boiler also. So for boiler we can use preheated water. So the amount of energy requirement will be lower for steam generation. So it can be used for feed water. So in a commercial establishment, hotels, hostel, etc., a natural convection system is not suitable because the heating is slow. Large area of flat plate, plate collectors are, can be used and force circulation is maintained with the help of pump. So for large scale application, pump is used for circulation of water. So water from an absorber tank is pumped through a collector area where it is heated and then flows back into the solar through the back into the storage tank. The pump for maintaining the force circulation is operated by an on-off type temperature controller. So in this case there is a on-off type temperature controller. One sensor is inserted at the outlet of solar collector. One sensor is inserted in the storage tank. So based on the temperature difference, rise or fall pump is actuated. So when the temperature is low in the storage tank then it will operate the pump and pump will force the water to the collector there where water is get heated. When temperature is at the desired level in the tank then pump will remain closed. So when the temperature in the storage tank is reduced the thermal controlling system operates the pump and it will force water to the collector where water will get heated with the help of solar energy. If the temperature of the water in the storage tank reaches to a preset level, the pump automatically stops the pumping water from the tank to the collector. So in this, in the absence of solar energy, there is one auxiliary heater, electrical heating. So there is resistance heater inserted in the tank. In when there is cloud, 
then electrical heating system can be operated and we can get hot water. This is the system, this is the area of collector, so this is the pump and this is the temperature controller and here temperature sensor, here there is one sensor in the storage tank, this is high quality insulated in storage tank for storing water. This is air vent to maintain the atmospheric pressure otherwise there will be chance of vacuum, vacuum formation. There is cold water makeup and this is electrical heating, auxiliary heater. If there is no sun, there is cloud, then this system can help in increasing in heating the water. We can get hot water. So there is auxiliary system and hot water can be available from this outlet, hot water for use and this is a final. So this is a working principle of this force circulation solar water heating system. When there is a drop in temperature, the pump will start pumping and there is none return valve. So water cannot return back to the storage tank. I will show one video from which you can get idea about working of solar water heating system. How solar water heating system actually works. So this video will explain you. Solar water heater. Solar water heater is a device used to heat water by trapping infrared radiations or heat radiations. Carefully observe the parts of a solar water heater. The solar water heater consists of an insulated box that is painted black from inside. In this box copper pipes are fitted in the form of a coil. These copper pipes are painted black from outside. The box is covered with a glass lid to prevent the loss of heat due to convection and radiation. The ends of the pipe are connected to the storage tank. The cold water enters the storage tank from the bottom and flows into the copper tubes. The infrared radiations from the sun get trapped inside the box. As a result, water inside the copper pipes gets heated up, becomes lighter. The heavier cold water from the storage tank, which is at a relatively lower temperature, flows down into the copper pipes and the hot water that is lighter flows into the storage tank. The circulation of water continues and this process by which water gets heated is known as thermosiphon effect. Thus we get hot water by trapping solar energy which is renewable, non-polluting and abundantly available. See one numerical problem. A solar flat plate collector having collector area of 2 meter square is used in 100 liters capacity thermosiphon solar water heating system. The average solar radiation falling on the collector during a typical day is 5 kilowatt hour per meter square. So this one is solar radiation. Assume that water is not drawn during the day. The initial temperature of water stored in tank is 20 degree Celsius. The specific heat of water may be assumed to be 4.2 kJ per kg per Kelvin. The collector efficiency of the solar water heating system is 50%. Determine the final temperature of water. So for this case, what will be the outlet temperature? What will be the hot water temperature, exit temperature. So see, an efficiency, collector efficiency is also given. So if th solar thermal co conversion efficiency equal to output, output power divided by input power multiplied by 100. First we have to calculate solar radiation incident on the collector per unit area per day into collector area into collector efficiency that will be equal to mass of water to be heated per day into specific heat multiplied by T2 minus T1. So T1 is initial temperature of water, T2 is a final temperature, exit temperature, hot temperature of the water. So solar radiation incident on collector per unit area per day equal to 5. There is 5 kilowatt, so K will be replaced by 1000. Then 
kilowatt hour. One hour means 3600 seconds. So you have to multiply 5 by 1000 multiplied by 3600 into collector area. Collector area is 2 meter square. So you have to multiply by 2. Efficiency is 50%. So <coughs> this will be multiplied by 0 0.5. That will be equal to amount of heat energy required to heat the water from one temperature to another temperature. So you have to use fundamental equation Q equal to MCP delta T. So M is 100 liters of water equal to 100 kg of water. So M will be 100 multiplied by specific heat of water. That is 4.2 kilo joule per kg per kg. So K will be, kilo will be replaced by 1000 into T2 minus. So solving this, you will get T2 equal to final temperature equal to 62.85 degrees Celsius. That is equal to 63 degrees Celsius. So under this situation, you will get hot water temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. Next problem. So the hot water requirement for a hostel of a college is 5000 liter per day. The average solar radiation available per day is 600 watt per meter square. This is the solar flux. The temperature of feed water is 30 degrees Celsius and the final hot water temperature should be 60 degree Celsius. So here T1 and T2 both are given. The area of solar collector is 75 meter square. So A is also given. The specific heat of water is 4.18 kilojoule per kg per degree Celsius. Assuming 8 hours of daily operation, compute the thermal efficiency of solar water heater. So in this case, you have to find out the thermal efficiency, collector thermal efficiency. Again, same formula you can apply. So see, first you, you know 1 liter of water equal to 1 kg and 1 watt equal to 1 joule per, per second. So using this concept, first you find total available solar heat energy per day equal to collector area into available solar radiation per day into operation operating time. So here collector area is 25 meter square, then flux is 600, then operation time is 8 hours. So you have to multiply 8 into 3600, then it will, be, it will come in second. So after multiplication you will get this much of energy, 1296000 kilo joule. Similarly, total heat energy required to heat the water per day will be equal to 5000 into specific heat 4.18 into 60 minus 30. So outlet temperature, exit temperature is 60, inlet is 30. So after solving, you will get this much of kilojoule. So you know the formula, thermal efficiency of solar water equal, meter equal to total heat energy required to heat the water per day into 100 divided by total available solar heat energy per day. So dividing 627.00 kilojoule divided by 1296.00 kilojoule multiplied by 100 will be equal to 48.38 percent. So this is the thermal efficiency. So this type of problem can be solved by using the fundamental equation Q equal to M C P T T and available amount of total energy. So one can use solar concentrators, concentrated type solar water heating system for high temperature application. One can use more and more energy can be captured with the help of this type of system. So see one numerical problem and this one is continuous type. Earlier was batch type. So continuously we can get hot water using this type of system. So this entry water, inlet water is going like this and water, hot water is coming from outlet. Problem based on this type of system, a cylindrical parabolic solar collector is designed to heat a fluid that enters the absorber at 140 degrees Celsius at a mass flow rate of 5 kg per minute. So mass flow rate here, this is for continuous process. So mass flow rate, it is given 5 kg per minute, so you have to first convert kg per, kg per second. The specific heat capacity of the fluid is 1.5 kJ per kg per degree Celsius. So again here K will be replaced by 1000. And its outlet temperature is 180 degree Celsius. 
So T1 and T2 both are given. If the incident beam radiation on the plane of aperture is 3000 kilojoule per hour per meter square and useful projected area of the reflector is 2 by 10 meters. So area is given 2 by 10. The efficiency of collector in the in percentage will be. So in this case, you have to again find out the solar thermal efficiency. What will be the solar thermal efficiency, correction efficiency? You have to use basic fundamental equation. Here, efficiency of collector equal to rate of heat gain. So, the amount of heat energy, solar energy utilized in heating the water, divided by available rate of heat input. So, first we have to calculate rate of heat gain. So, amount of heat energy required in heating the water. So, 5, mass flow rate is 5, 5 by 60 means kg per second and especially heat of load 1.5 into 180, outlet temperature minus inlet 140. So, here I have not replaced the k by 1000, that's why I am writing here 5 kJ per second. So, this is the rate of heat gain during the <coughs> collection. Rate of heat input equal to 3000 into character area 2 by 10 divided by 3600. Since it is given in solar flux per hour, so we have to first convert into per second. That's why this by 3600. So solving this, we will get 16.67 kJ per second. Then efficiency of collector equal to rate of heat gain divided by rate of heat input. So 5 divided by 16.67 into 100 that will uh, that will be equal to 30 percent. 30 percent. For, for this situation, so we have thermal efficiency of 30 percent. Now next topic is solar distillation. So we know distillation, in distillation what happens? In pure water is or salt water is converted into pure water. So, with the help of energy, heat energy, impure water is, water is evaporated and then condensed and condensed water is of pure. Simple distillation, in this case see, heat is applied to the salt water, so water will evaporate after getting energy and this evaporated water or steam will go through condensation. So, during this condensation, the steam or water vapor will be converted into condensate. So in this way, pure water can be obtained. So normally, in every laboratory you will find this type of simple distillation system where electrical heating is there. Electrical immersion, electrical heater is there and that heat the water and water is converted into steam, the steam is converted into condensate. So with the help of this type of system, pure water or distilled water can be obtained. In solar distillation what happens? Demand of fresh water production is day by day increasing due to increasing population and industrial growth. So the process of distillation in which solar energy is used for obtaining pure water or distilled water is called solar distillation and the device which is used for this purpose is called solar steel. So solar steels are used across the world to provide cleaner drinkable water to the masses where pure water is not available solar distillation system or solar steel can be used for getting pure water since we know that solar energy is freely available and inexhaustible so this energy is freely freely available one can use this energy for creating salt water into potable potable water so one type is there are various designs available in the world market but one popular one is basin type solar steel so this type of solar steel is used for getting distilled water or pure water. So in this case there is one basin, there is one basin for containing water and then basin is painted with black color for absorption of solar radiation. The basin stores salt water which is used for distillation. The basin is closed with a transparent cover to create greenhouse effect and to uh, trap the heat energy. So the basin is closed with a transparent cover. In the top of the basin was there is one condensate channel. So water evaporate, evaporated water get condensed 
and condensate through the condensate channel that is provided with a gradient for easy flow of water. So the working principle is that first heating the water, so water will evaporate and then water that evaporated water will get condensed. So heating, evaporation and condensation. This is the working principle of a solar steel. So heating, how heating will happen? Due to absorption of solar radiation. Solar radiation will be converted into heat energy. So it will heat the water. Water after getting sufficient energy, water will evaporate and then evaporated water will be will get condensed and that that condensate can be collected. Collected. So the solar radiation incident on the glass cover of a solar steel is absorbed by the salt water and black surface. The absorbed solar radiation is converted into heat energy. That energy is utilized for heating the water. And there is also greenhouse effect. So maximum solar energy can be trapped. So this is the basic working principle of a solar steel. The channel are provided gradient to one side where the condensed, condensed water is collected. So thus pure water can be obtained by this process. The normal performance of a solar steel is the amount of condensate or port portable water obtained per meter square per day. So if well designed solar steel, one can get distilled water or pure water up to 3 to 5 liter per day per meter square. So there are various designs are available for getting pure water from salt water. See one example, this is a pictorial schematic diagram of solar steel. This is dome type, see two sides. This side plastic, uh, may be made of glass or plastic, transparent cover, saline water is here, then basin with black liner to, for absorption of maximum solar energy, then high quality insulation. Insulation is provided to reduce conductive heat loss. So more will be the heat loss, lower will be, lower will be the efficiency of solar energy collection. And this is the condensate channel. Water, water will, will evaporate and it will form a fine droplet. So drop, droplet will move like this due to slant and it, it will come to the channel. Through channel, we, one can collect the distilled water or pure water. Another photograph, how solar radiation is captured to heat the sol water. We see evaporation from the surface of water after getting sufficient energy and this creates the greenhouse effect. And this is the black lining for capture of maximum solar radiation. And this is the process of condensation, see, and this is the collection trough through which water can be collected. And this one is the basin. This is the simple working principle of the uh, basic type solar steel. So there are various types of design available in the market. See another one, same working principle is same, heating, evaporation, then condensation. Due to temperature difference, water vapor will get condensed. And this is the water storage tank, pure water storage tank. And this is glass cover. And this is inlet for saline water. Again here solar concentrator where high temperature can be achieved so faster conversion of water into steam can be obtained due to more solar energy concentration. This is a focal point so radiation is focused to collected at here and this will convert into a steam or hot water steam and the steam is going like this is a boiler and this is a condenser so here steam will get condensed into pure water or distillate. Again, there is another design is the spherical one. So in this case again, principle is same. Evaporation, condensation and collection is, uh, this is the measling, measling jar. So by doing some certain experiment, we can evaluate, we can calculate how much condensate can be obtained in a particular day, depending upon the solar flux. This one is tubular type solar steel. Again, here the principle is same. Greenhouse effect, heating due to greenhouse effect, conversion of water into vapor, then condensation and condensate is obtained in this collector. The animated picture how solar saline water can be converted into uh, distilled water. Solar saline water can be converted into portable water or distilled water. So from this video you will get clear idea about working of a solar estate.
Then next topic is solar cooker. We know that presently fossil fuels are used for cooking foods. So that fossil fuel can be replaced by solar energy. If uh, we are using, we will use solar energy for cooking foods. So demand of energy for cooking is continuously increasing due to growth in population. Cooking with solar energy is one of the promising solutions for meeting energy demands. The device which are used for cooking foods utilizing solar energy is called solar cookers. There are various solar cookers are available in the market. And many companies are manufacturing solar cookers of different designs. So again working principle of solar cooker is same. Conversion of solar radiation into heat energy with the help of creating greenhouse effect. So <laughs> this is done as follows concentration, concentration of solar energy then conversion of solar radiation into heat energy, then trapping heat energy. Trapping it heat energy is possible due to covering of covering made of glass or plastic sheet. So this employs greenhouse effect for cooking the food. Photo I have given here. In this case, this is the glass cover. This is glass cover. So solar radiation of salt, salt wave radiation pass through this glass cover and after heating and this is the black lining so it will absorb maximum solar radiation so after heating again he, he, in short radiation is converted into infrared radiation and this glass cover does not allow infrared radiation to pass so there is a greenhouse effect and there is a trapping of heat energy so more or more and more energy can be created due to this greenhouse effect and heating will be faster, there will be natural convection inside this box and heating will be uniform. Since everywhere temperature you will find uniform temperature after few hours. Few hours. There are different types of solar cooker available in the world market. First one is box type cooker, second one is panel type and third one is parabolic dish. So these are commonly used in the world market. But most popular one is box type solar cooker. cookers. Final cookers resemble an open three-sided box. So you have seen in this photo, see one side open. In box type, all side is covered. And the sun rays hit the shiny panels and are redirected into the center of the box. The heat tra trap is also used for creating greenhouse effect for capture of more solar radiation. So heat traps can be made of either maybe made of glass, transparent glass or plastic sheet. A black painted cooking container is placed inside the heat trap. The reflective panel directs the solar radiation onto the surface of the cooker. Due to greenhouse effect, solar radiation is again converted into heat energy and that heat energy is utilized to cook the food material contained in, inside the pot. The temperature can reach between 121 degrees Celsius to 149 degrees Celsius. But this temperature is may vary depending upon the design and efficiency of the cooker. This type of cooker is good for general cooking of rice, pasta, soup, meats, vegetables, casseroles, etc. In bright sunshine, the food can be cooked within two to three hours. There are certain designs available in the market. So see, this container acts as a heat trapper. This is outside cover is made of glass. So that this cover will create greenhouse effect. So heating will be faster, cooking will be faster. So there are certain designs available in the world market. This is panel cooker. Next one is box type solar cooker. This one is most popular. So among different types of solar cookers, box type cookers are the most common, simplest and easy to operate, useful for cooking a meal of family of three to six members. It is sometimes also called as solar oven and the cost varies from 1400 rupees to 3000 depending upon design and mode. So this type of cooker consists of insulated metal box painted with black color for maximum absorption of solar radiation then glass cover to create greenhouse, greenhouse effect more for energy trapping plain mirror or a reflector for focusing solar radiation onto the surface of the glass co cover then metal container painted black from outside for containing food material. So normally part of the solar, solar cooker in which food is cooked is made of copper. 
due to high thermal conductivity of the copper. So there will be quick heating. More energy can be captured and energy transfer will be faster. So working principle will remain same, creating greenhouse effect, capture of more solar radiation after using reflector. So more solar radiation can be captured, more greenhouse effect will be there and heating will be faster. This is the diagram of solar cooker, solar radiation, reflection from this mirror and solar radiation directly going to the glass cover, reflector, glass sheet cover, then interior metal box painted with black color for maximum absorption of solar radiation. Then outer box insulation, high quality insulation to reduce the conductive heat loss so that the temperature remain maintained during the cooking. There's various type of design available in the world market like this one is box type solar cooker with reflector. Another one is again see box type solar cooker then merits of solar cooker. In this case no orientation to sun is required, no attention is needed during the cooking only you have to keep in the outside no fuel maintenance and recurring cost simple to use and fabricate no pollution. Demerits are First, cooking can be done only when there is sunshine. Quick cooking is not possible because temperature rise is not so high. It cannot be used during the rainy season or cloudy condition. So, solar radiation is required for conversion of solar radiation into heat energy. All types of food cannot be cooked and cannot be used for baking and frying. So, for baking and frying, high temperature application solar cooker is required. Then again, I will show here one video that will explain you working of a solar cooker, box type solar cooker. Solar cooker A solar cooker is a device that is used to cook food by utilizing the energy radiated by the sun. Here you can see how a solar cooker is made. You may require a wooden box having a thermocol lining, aluminum sheet, black paint, mirror, glass sheet, hinges, wooden lid for the box and containers to cook food. Take a wooden box having thermocol lining from inside. Now make a box out of the aluminium sheet. Paint the inner side of the aluminium box black. Now fix a mirror to the lid and with the help of the hinges fix the lid to the wooden box. Now cover the box with a glass sheet. The glass sheet helps in trapping the heat radiations. The mirror helps in concentrating light rays into the box. Now this solar cooker can be used to cook food. Paint the containers in which you wish to cook black from outside. Place these containers filled with food item inside the box. Now place the solar cooker in direct sunlight. Adjust the position of the plane mirror so that a strong beam of sunlight falls on the glass sheet. The rays coming from the sun pass through the glass sheet and are absorbed by the objects inside the cooker. The glass sheet does not allow the solar energy to flow out in the form of radiant heat. Gradually more and more heat radiations get trapped and the food gets cooked. The range of temperature that can be attained in this type of cooker is 100 to 140 degrees Celsius. Parabolic cooker, again, so like pressure cooker. So pressure cooker can be kept, pressure is 100 degrees Celsius. The specific heat of rice, water, vessel are 3.8 kilojoule per kg per degree Celsius. 4.18 kJ per kg per degree Celsius and 0.9 kJ per kg per degree Celsius respectively. The average solar radiation during cooking is 700 Watt per meter square. The total area of for solar radiation collection is 1.12 meter square. This is the collector area. The time taken for cooking is 1.5 hour. Compute the thermal efficiency of solar cooker. Again, so first we have to calculate the cooking amount of heat energy required for cooking the food. So the total heat energy required for cooking rice will be mass of the rice into specific heat of rice plus mass of water into specific heat of water plus mass of vessel 
into specific heat of vessel into temperature rise or temperature change. So mass of rice is 1 kg, specific heat is 3.1, again for mass of water 2 kg, CP value 4.8 plus mass of weight of container 0.5 into specific heat 0.9 multiplied by 100 minus 30. So cooking temperature is 100 and initial temperature is 30. So solving this you will get 882.7 kilo joule. So this much of energy is required for cooking to for cooking food. Assuming 30% of this energy is required throughout the period of cooking, then total energy required for cooking food will be 882.7 plus 882.7 into 30%. So adding this you will get 1104. 47.51 kJ. So this is the actual amount of energy required for cooking the food. Now see the input energy. How much input energy we are getting. So total solar radiation, solar energy equal to available solar radiation into area into time. So flux is 700 watt per meter square. A collected area is 1.12 into 1.15 into 3600. So solving this you will get uh, 4233.6 kJ. So thermal efficiency of solar cooker will be heat energy used for cooking divided by input solar energy. So solving this you will get 27%. So for this type of situation thermal uh, efficiency will be 27%. Parabolic solar cooker. For high temperature application like frying, baking, grilling, so one can use parabolic type solar cooker where more and more solar radiation can be concentrated to a particular point and that can be heated quickly. Since temperature rises more, cooking will be faster. For, for faster cooking, this type of system can be utilized. So parabolic solar cooker normally used uh, parabolic dishes. The dish is covered with a shining reflective material. So because of the parabolic shape and with the aid of reflecting material, a lot of solar radiation can be concentrated to the focal point where the material will be. The cooking pot is placed at the focal of the reflector. So more and more solar energy can be captured and concentrated to the pot. The pot surface are black, are painted with black color for maximum absorption of solar radiation. A very high temperature can be achieved like the temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius temperature can be achieved in this system. So normally it is suitable for baking, frying, roasting and grilling application. Some of, designs, some of the designs are available in the market. This type of cooking can be achieved with the help of parabolic dish cooker. Again, so like pressure cooker. So pressure cooker can be kept at focal point and more and more solar radiation can be focused on the pressure cooker. So pressure cooker can be used for cooking rice or vegetable and other foods. Then community solar cooker. So in case of community solar cooker, safer community cooker is normally used for uh, community solar cooking. The receiver of the cephalar dish is placed at the focal of the dish to capture the incident solar radiation and transfer it to the thermal medium. Tracking system is also used for capture maximum amount of solar radiation. So this, this is one example of cephalar dish. So this type of dish is normally used for steam generation. And is that in generated steam can be utilized for cooking different types of food materials. One example I have cited here, the Sai Baba Temple Complex at Sidri, Maharashtra, uh, Ahmadan, uh, Ahmadnagar district has installed one of the world largest solar cooking system based on shuffler dishes. So the solar rays are used to heat for conversion of water into steam and that steam is used for cooking different type of food material. So in this type of using this type of system lots of fossil fuel or gas can be saved. Sai Baba temple complex how they are using this type of system for cooking community food. So these are all about solar water heating system, solar distillation and solar cooking system. So in next class we will discuss 
सोलर एयर हीटर सोलर ड्रायर एंड सोलर पंप थैंक यू